Hey, I was really excited today to get the new, I got a notice in my email announcing that the journal Science has published the draft report on the Neanderthal Genome Project. The genome has been sequenced and, um, as they often do with big news, they have made uh, several of the articles in that issue free to the public. I will put a link down below. Uh, please check them out. They're very, very cool. I haven't read the second one yet. Um, I just skimmed it. I read the first one, uh, which is what this video is about. Now, obviously, even though I'm an invertebrate zoologist, you guys look behind me. Uh, you know, I have a great interest in, in human evolution. Um, I, I'm interested in evolution in general, but human evolution always had a, I've always had a soft spot for anthropology and human evolution. Um, and in fact, I considered strongly going into that field in, in, as an undergraduate, um, I'm ultimately glad I pursued what I did because I, I think I got, and I don't mean any disrespect towards anthropology, I'm re I really don't, but I got a stronger background in uh, some of the harder science, some of the harder biological principles that I've seen lacking in some of the anthropology students I've met that are brilliant people, but they, there's, there's, you know, they, they hadn't, there's a lot of stuff that I've learned that they haven't learned. Um, likewise, I'm sure they would say the same thing about my field. But that's 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 the beauty of having of multiple disciplines. Um, but I so I can look at some of the, I can read maybe I could read an anthropology article and I might see something that they haven't seen. And I'm not trying to you know overextend my my knowledge base, but I'm able to look at that and make some you know there's things that make sense to me, um, maybe even make more sense than the authors. Uh, really put forth, or it more, I get more insight out of it because of that. I, I can compare. I can say, well, that's just like the foraminifera sequences. That's a lot, you know, this kind of thing. I can look at these, possibly, and you know. So I, I ultimately, I'm glad I went into the field that I went into. But this is one of the things in in this field. I've, I, there's two really. I guess they're not conflicting thoughts. In fact, one's one's a minority opinion now. It used to be a more prominent opinion. Um, in in human evolution, in modern human evolution at least, is the what they call the out of Africa hypothesis versus the multi regional hypothesis. Um, now the out of Africa hypothesis, this this is the mitochondrial Eve thing, and it it has certainly has a lot of evidence. It certainly is a really really strong and powerful. It's a very robust hypothesis. Um, the multi regional one has lost a lot of favor, and in fact has somewhat gone downhill to being a, a minority position, a relative minority position in the field. Um, and one of the things about that, and I'm not trying to, it's not the, just simply a rooting for the underdog, um, but I heard, uh, I went to a talk and saw Milford Wolpoff talking about the multi-regional hypothesis in part, um, specifically about Neanderthals. And he, the way he presented it, was so completely logical and biologically sound um, and as, sort of after that I became kind of defensive of that position in the sense that um, I knew it, I heard him, how he explained it and I hear a lot of the other side uh, in somewhat straw manning his argument or straw manning his position um, into a, a basically kind of a racist a, a very extreme position um, one that that violates a lot of rules of biology when his actual position sounded nothing like what they describe it as, if that makes sense. Um, and so, what is it going to get? Basically, just to, the, the 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 articles, a lot of great stuff in the, in the article, both articles, but the one specifically that I'm talking about is this article shows beyond a shadow of a doubt. Okay, there's always a shadow of a doubt. This article strongly supports that early modern humans, um, the descendants of mitochondrial Eve, leaving Africa, interbred with Neanderthals before spreading into Europe and Asia. Um, and in fact, w the surprising thing they found, um, it was believed by people who, who believed that there was some crossbreeding, that this crossbreeding... Uh, would be found if 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 the evidence were found in modern human populations that it would be found in Europeans uh, things like the ginger gene was used as, as support for that um, and that's also where some of the fossils that Milford Wolpoff was discussing came from were in Europe 
uh, while well, these authors found an equal distribution of this Neanderthal genes in the human population in Europe and in Asia, um, specifically China, I believe is what one of the ones they outlined, one of the populations they looked at in China, um, essentially stating that as humans left Africa, early on this interbreeding occurred, and then the populations diversified into Europeans and, and modern Asians, including Papua New, Guinea, New Guineans. Um, while Africans have fewer of these modern Africans have fewer of these Neanderthaloid genes in their populations and then, uh, to me that's fascinating it was a fascinating study and it 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 really shows to me I mean, it, it, I think Milford Wolpoff is probably celebrating right now I didn't see his name on the author's list of the first paper it's a long author's list uh, but I'm sure I, I know some of his students are involved in it because he, he talked about a number of his students working on this on the genomic projects, and I'm sure he's just celebrating. It's got to be a complete vindication for him because he was using um, uh, morphological evidence to support this for, for a long time. And then when the first uh, gene sequences came out, they they sort of indicated that he was wrong. They sort of indicated like, look, here's this here's this gene sequence. There's nothing in common between them. Modern humans and Neanderthaloid never interbred. Neanderthal type never interbred, um, and he presented that. Even he said that this, this certainly is strong evidence against this theory. But here's why I still think I'm right. And he talked about the, the way that mitochondria can give false information um, with a bottleneck, and it was really quite quite well done. But for my personal thing, my 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 personal opinion, uh, this this is also something of a vindication, simply because this is something I've I've held to be true for a long time and thought to be true by pet theory. I know that's not very scientific. Um, and I've had a lot of arguments against it. I've had the viewpoint called very racist, which it's not racist. Um, I've had people... I, basically, what I want to do is I want to give a sort of a, a shout-out. I want to... This is to the people at in graduate school, the anthropology students that um, we occasionally would mingle with from the bio department, um, like at lectures like at Milford Wolpoff's lectures, you know, that little group, that little gaggle of you out there, the ones that, um, when you were talking about how he was full of shit, and I said, well, actually, it kind of made sense because of, and I'm, you know, talking about some population genetic stuff that he discussed, and you guys all laughed at me and told me, uh, what is it, how was it, that I should stick, I should stick to my little bugs because I obviously don't know shit about real science, meaning that anthropology was real science and my field wasn't. Um, to, to you guys, and uh, see, there was one on a discussion forum. Uh, who was it? Somebody, how did they put it? That Oh, somebody told me that obviously I get all of my scientific knowledge from Clan of the Cave Bear and instead of actually reading papers and I should learn how to read a scientific paper before I form an opinion. That was, somebody else said that to me once too. Um, to all of you people, and not, not, there's a billion to one chance that any of you are actually watching this, but in case you do, and you say, hey, wait, I know you. I said that to you once. If you're out there, I have a, a you know, I'm maintaining professionalism, maintaining, um, you know, you know, this, the, this is how scientific ideas are combated in the field and you know how, how um, some ideas prevail and some ideas fall by the wayside and such. But I have to say to you guys, fuck you. I'm right. You're wrong. Suck on that. 